All right, this is uh, online class 12. Uh, today we're going to cover section 7.2, estimating a population proportion. Uh, Friday, November 2nd, it's fall 2012, and of course, math 125 statistics, and my name is Perez. All right, the title, we're starting a new chapter today, and the title of chapter 7 is entitled Estimates and sample sizes. Uh, I'm just going to call it estimates and really if I was to write my own statistics textbook you could easily call this chapter confidence intervals because that's what we're going to be constructing all through this section is confidence interval estimates of various parameters and statistics of interest. All right, again, let me get, kind of give us a motivation here. Let's say we've got a large population. Again, perhaps millions of numerical measurements of some characteristic of interest. So let me signify that population with a random variable x with lots and lots of data, right? Suppose we want to estimate the population proportion with some desired characteristic of interest. I'm going to symbolize this idea of a population proportion with the little lowercase p. All right. So, let's see we want to estimate the population proportion of, well, let's say, you pick any characteristic of interest that you like. Uh, let's talk about left-handed U.S. college students And with the usual idea that we have maybe millions of U.S. college students, how on earth are we going to count up all the number of left-handed ones? Well, the idea, of course, is you can't. And the idea, well, if you're trying to find what that proportion is, you'll never really know it for sure. There's just too many, too many students to count. So what we're going to do is take a sample. of US college students and we can easily compute the sample proportion. Of left handed college students in that sample and then hopefully we can embrace that as our best estimate of P our population proportion of left handed college students. All right. Compute the sample proportion. Let's work out an example here. We'll say we've got a class of 30 college students. And in that class of college students, you've got four left-handers. And of course, I'm going to let little n equal let little n equal the sample size of course and x is going to be our count of left-handed students in that class or the raw number with that that characteristic of interest the sample proportion generally will be referred to as the symbol p hat so i can easily compute p hat here all it is is the number, the raw, the raw count with your desired characteristic of interest divided, of course, by your sample size. And this easy example, it's going to be four left-handers divided by 30 left-handers. And I get a sample proportion of 0.133. 
Again, p hat refers to the sample proportion with any desired characteristic of interest. All right, I call this a point estimate. Let me write that down. This is a point estimate of your population proportion, which we refer to as little p, right? So, p hat equals 0.133 is a point estimate of little p, where little p is your population with, again, our desired characteristic. All right, generally, it's widely assumed that the proportion of left-handers worldwide is about 0.1. All right, so we can see that in this example here, 0.133 was a pretty good estimate of what you might experience really in any group of people um, o over time. All right, so write that down. Uh, hopefully, uh, but not always, hopefully, p hat is a good estimate of little p. Alright, All right. there is a better way to estimate population proportions rather than just with a single numerical estimate. I mean, p hat might be a good estimate of p, p hat may not be a good estimate of little p. Well, there is a better way. Better way to estimate little p, that's with an interval estimate. All right, the, um, basically what we're going to do is construct an interval on the real number line. I'll have a minimum value and a maximum value. The minimum value we're going to compute in this fashion. I'm going to take my sample proportion and subtract some quantity E we'll call margin of error. And I will similarly, similarly take my sample proportion and add that margin of error and create what we call a confidence interval or confidence interval estimate of little p. And we call little p as our population proportion. Well, the idea here is Maybe P will land between these two boundaries. Maybe P will not land between these two boundaries. Well, the idea here is with uh, doing things the right way, we will be reasonably confident at certain levels of probability that P lands within these boundaries. All right, we'll show you how to compute these boundaries, and it's pretty easy to do that with uh, the power of our calculators. Uh, before we go into the nuts and bolts of how to do that, I just want to claim that if you've got a wider interval, of course you will be more confident that any such constructed interval will contain little p. And of course, if you've got a narrower interval, you will be less confident that such a constructed interval will indeed contain p. All right. Well, again, the idea here is we're going to let the TI calculator, TI-8384, will actually con calculate these boundaries for us. And we'll go over that in just a moment. 
All right. I want you to familiarize yourself with example three in the textbook. Example three, it's a worked out example. We're not going to use the book's technique, though. The book um, basically relies on a paper and pencil method, a very tedious paper and pencil technique. But again, we're going to make things um, quite a bit less tedious uh, if we indeed use the full power of the TI calculator here. All right, so example three, look, read example three on page 334. And please pause now and refer, and refer to that example. All right. Well, let's see. The uh, information they give us in the text, we want to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for little p. Our sample size is 1501. Our sample proportion, they tell us, is 0.7. So basically, you're looking to estimate the population proportion of global people who believe in global warming with this given information. All right, to let, get the calculator, let me write that down. We want to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for little p, the population proportion of those people who believe that global warming actually exists. All right, let me show you how to get these boundaries. On the TI-83, you press the stat button. Then select the test sub-option. Then scroll down, I believe on the 83, it's address A. You may have to fish for it a little bit on the TI-84. You then select, and be sure you select the right item here. It's one prop Z int, right, that stands for one proportion z interval. Right, the calculator then prompts us for some values. And let me write down what those are here. X is the raw number of well, people who believe in global warming. I'll abbreviate that globe, globe warm. Right. And for that value, we're going to plug in 1051. Now you may ask how I got 1051. Well, all it is is your sample raw number is going to be 70% of the sample size 1501. So all you have to do is multiply 1501 by 0.7 and you'll get that raw number in our sample that believe in global warming. Right. Next the calculator prompts us for a sample size. Well, of course, that's going to be 1501 taken in that sample. The book then, or the, sorry, the calculator then prompts us for a confidence level. Now, again, our level of confidence here is specified as 95%, so I'll punch it in as a decimal as 0.95. And as you might guess, then we select calculate. and hit enter and the calculator returns an interval of numbers in what I call open interval notation. All right, these are the, going to be the boundaries for our confidence interval estimate for little p. Right. If I Draw a little sketch here to help you interpret this. Again, the formula for cap E, the book talks about it. Uh, it's somewhat tedious. Uh, the calculator computes it for us automatically, so I'm not going to go into cap E right now. But our P hat, take away cap E, that's going to be our lower boundary, and that's the point 67702. The P hat plus Cap E is going to be 0.72338. Hopefully P, our population proportion, will land somewhere in this range. Uh, the idea is we're never really sure, but we can hope with a certain probability or a certain level of confidence 
that that will happen. I'm going to symbolize this confidence interval in this fashion. We've got a low boundary of the interval at 0.677. I'll round off the three decimal places. The book does too. I'll round, then say the upper boundary for this interval estimate is 0.723. And I will finally denote my confidence interval estimate in this fashion. All right, this tells me, well, let me label this first. I call this my 95% confidence interval estimate for P, the population proportion of people worldwide that believe in global warming. All right, so again, the calculator takes a lot of the tedium away, and uh, we're able to easily compute this confidence interval and ones like it. All right, so that's example three on page 334. Um, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to have to go to another screen here. Square things up. All right, another example. This one's not worked out in the book, but it is a homework exercise. Uh, it's exercise 32 on page 341. Let me turn there myself. Two on page 341. So go there, please. Familiarize yourself with this exercise and come back when you're ready to grind it out with me. Please pause now. All right, here we're asking the question about medical malpractice. An important issue facing Americans is the large number of medical malpractice lawsuits and the expenses that they generate. In a study of 1228, so right away I'm going to start writing some of this stuff down. In a survey of 1,228 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits, it is found that 856 of them were later dropped or dismissed. Now here, they don't give us a sample proportion. Here they give us a raw number of lawsuits with our characteristic of interest. All right, so I can write that down. X is going to be 856. That's an 8 there. Uh, a, what is the best point estimate of the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed? All right, well, our point estimate of P, again, our P represents a population proportion of dropped lawsuits. We're going to use P hat to estimate little p. And p hat is our sample proportion of lawsuits that were dropped or dismissed. Well, that's nothing more than your raw number of dropped lawsuits divided by the total number of lawsuits you're surveying. So that's going to be 856 divided by 1228. And I punch that out and I get a p hat value of 856, do it here, 856 divided by 1228, I get 0.697. All right, and then if I peek at the textbook's answer, yes, that agrees. All right, so again, this p hat is our best point estimate of P, but again, we've got a better way. and We can create interval estimates. Again, the idea here is maybe P hat is a good estimate of P, maybe P hat is not a good estimate of P, and maybe an interval estimate creating a range of values in which we can hopefully contain P, maybe that's a better way. All right, let's look at part B. Construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. 
So here they are given, we are given the confidence level and typically that is given to you. So I'll say my confidence level is then going to be 0.99. And again, the other information still holds. In other words, we had 856. I'm sorry. Yeah, 856 lawsuits were dropped or dismissed out of 1228 randomly selected lawsuits. All right, so again, using your calculator, we press stats or stat. I should say. Then the tests sub option. And again, be sure you pick the white the right one. It's one proportion Z int. Int meaning interval. And and plug in the information as it's prompted. We've got eight hundred and fifty six as a raw number of dropped lawsuits. 1228 is the total number you're surveying. Of course, your C level is going to be 0.99. And if we punch that into our calculator, hit calculate, and then enter, write that down, uh, select calculate. And of course, enter. We get this return from our TI 83 or 84.66329 on the low end and 0 0.73085 on the high end. All right. Again, I'm going to symbolize it in this fashion. This means my 99% confidence interval estimate for little p. Well, it's going to look like this. Well, we're going to have a low boundary, which the calculator grinds out for us, a high boundary, again via the calculator, with little p in between. So this value I embrace as the low boundary, this value I embrace as the high boundary, so I'll write my final answer in this double-sided inequality fashion. Again, the book tends to round things off to three decimal places. I'll do the same. And I call this my 99% confidence interval estimate for population proportion of lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. All right, I'm going to do one more example, then we'll call it a day. I want to look at another homework exercise. This is exercise 39 on page 342. So please turn there, familiarize yourself with the statement of the problem, and come back when you're ready to go. All right, number 39 states, after 276 passengers on the QE2 cruise ship contracted a virus, America Online presented this question on its internet, internet site. Would the recent outbreak deter you from taking a cruise? Among the 34,358 people surveyed. All right, so I'm going to write that down. The total number... I'm surveying here, and that's going to be our sample size, and it's kind of large, 34,358 people who responded, 62% answered yes. Now here in this problem, they give us the sample proportion. In other words, 62% said yes, so I'm going to refer to that sample proportion then as 0.62. Use the sample data to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate. So. I will write down my confidence level as 0.95. And use the sample data cons to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the population of all people who would respond yes 
to that question. So we've got a certain p proportion of sample people that said yes, and we'll see about the population proportion. All right. All right, notice they do not give us a raw number of people who said yes. They give it to us in the form of a proportion. So I've got to compute x. Well, x is, remember, that is your raw number of people who would say yes to this question. So I've got to take my sample size, multiply it by 0.62 to get a raw number of people who would say yes in our sample. So I take 34358 times 0.62. I punch that out. I'll call it 21302. And let me make a note of that. This is 0.62 times the rather large sample size. So this is a raw number of yeses in my sample. Okay? So again now I'll turn to the TI calculator, the TI-83, press stat, then tests, and again one prop Z int stands for one proportion Z interval. Uh, I suppose I should mention that it's Z because we're basing this on Z score information that is computed upstream. If I punch in all the necessary information, well, let me write it down. You probably know what to do at this point. Our third time out on this 21302 is my raw number. My sample size 34358. Of course, the confidence level typically given to you. Here it's 0.95. I'll select Enter. I'm sorry, select Calculate. Then press Enter. And this is what the calculator returns for us. 0 0.61487 and 0.62513. Again, these represent upper and lower boundaries for my interval estimate for P. So I'll write on the high end 0.625 and on the low end I'll round it off to three decimal places 0.615 and again I'll call this my 95 percent confidence interval estimate for little p. Alright this tells me that P, six, let's see, how am I going to say this? Let me be careful here. This tells me that 95% of the intervals that I so construct will actually contain P. Let me write that down. 95% of these constructed intervals, in other words, that I construct in similar fashion using sample data, will actually contain P. Again, where little p is the population proportion, in this case, of people that would say yes to the stated question. Okay? All right, so we've uh, done some preliminary uh, material and uh, talked about three examples, one in the book and two out of the homework exercises. Um, I think that's enough for today. So we'll call it a day, and this concludes uh, Online Class 12, Section 7.2, Estimating Population Proportions, and that is all.